good morning, my dear friends in Christ, and I'm glad to welcome you once again to our reflection this morning. In our reflection today is titled, The One Thing That Is Lacking. Today's liturgical readings for the 28th Sunday of Father in Time B invites you and I to reflect, to give the priority of place to God in our lives. The readings invite us to surrender the faith of Jesus, anything at all in our lives that is capable of robbing us eternal life. Anything that will be an obstacle to us on our way to salvation, they really invite us to surrender it to Jesus. And we have a very good example of this in today's Gospel reading, taken from the Gospel of St. Mark. In this Gospel, St. Mark presents us with the encounter between Jesus and the rich young man. According to St. Mark, this rich young man ran after Jesus. He did not walk up to Jesus, no, he ran. Normally rich men don't run after people. Rich men walk, and when they walk, they walk majestically as if they own the whole world. They don't run after people, rather people run after them. But this rich young man ran after Jesus. And probably as he was running after Jesus, he was running and falling, rising up, running and falling, getting up. And probably too, he was shouting, please sir, excuse me Jesus, I would like to speak to you, excuse me sir. It was Lucky Dubio said that big boys don't cry. But this big boy, this rich young man, was crying after Jesus, excuse me sir. And when people saw him running after Jesus, a rich man running after a poor carpenter. They were surprised and probably they would have asked themselves what could be the problem, what is wrong with him. And the disciples of Jesus seeing this probably would have also been very curious to know why this man was running after them. This rich young man was running after Jesus not because he was sick, he needed healing. Not because somebody was pursuing him, running away from enemies. He wasn't running after Jesus because he needed progress and prosperity in his business. He wasn't running after Jesus because he needed the blessings of Jesus to win, to win a political election. No. He was running after Jesus for something very important to him, something very dear to him, eternal life. He needed had the faith of Jesus. A rich young man running after Jesus and kneeling at the feet of Jesus. Let us for a while pause and reflect on the attitude of this young man. A rich man. Imagine the humiliation he put aside his self-respect, his dignity, and ran after a poor capital Messiah. How many times have we experienced or suffered humiliation, insult, or persecution because of your belief in Jesus or because you wanted eternal life so badly? But here we see someone so desirous of eternal life that he underwent this kind of humiliation. He subjected himself to it. But then on the other hand, when we look at this young man, he seems to be was ready to do anything to win eternal life. When Jesus asked him to keep the commandments, he said he has kept all the commandments. He has passed all the tests, all the examinations necessary, he has passed all of them. But only one thing is lacking. Only one. He has gone so far, he has come to this extent, just one thing. But this rich young man could not fulfill this one thing. The Bible says he went away sad. And what was this one thing that was lacking? Charity towards the poor. He was wealthy, he was rich, but he could not be charitable towards the poor. He lacked charity. What was lacking in his life was charity towards the poor. He was so much attached to his wealth, to his property, to his possessions, that his possessions possessed him. He was so much attached to it that he could not share, give it away to the poor. He went away sad. Having undergone all the humiliation, all the suffering, gone to this estate, he could not make this one more last sacrifice. He could not push away this obstacle to gain eternal life. He went home sad. And there is friends in Christ. It's really sad indeed. Like this rich young man, many of us have gone so far. 
We have come away from a far distance, undergone humiliation, tortures, persecution, insults, a lot of things, fasting and prayers. But perhaps in our lives there is something that is lacking, that is capable of robbing us of eternal life. Jesus today invites you now to reflect what is that thing in my life? What is that thing in my family? What is it, that particular thing that is capable of stealing away from me my eternal salvation? What is that thing that is capable of taking away or being an obstacle for me to enter heaven? What is that one thing? For this rich young man, it was his material attachment and lack of charity towards the poor. Probably for you or for me, it may not be attachment to material things. It could be keeping grudge, holding grudges against others. Probably the one thing that is lacking in my life is lack of charity towards others. It could be unforgiveness. It could be betrayal. It could be attachment to alcoholism. It could be addition to drugs. It could be the test for revenge. It could be acrimony, the anger, bitterness within us. What is that one thing that is capable of robbing you of your eternal life? We pray on this day that the good Lord will help us with the grace. Just as the psalmist prayed in the sense, possible psalm of today, that God will give us the wisdom so that we can be able to count our lives and live our right. The wisdom that Solomon prayed for you this first reading, that God will give us that kind of wisdom to discern our right, to know what is right and just, and the grace to do the right thing. And the good Lord will help us with the grace we need to be detached so that anything that is lacking or capable of robbing us of our eternal salvation, that He may remove it from us so that after all our struggles, after all that we have undergone humiliation and persecution, so that on the last day, heaven will be ours. We make our prayers to Christ our Lord. Amen. My dearest friends, the Christ, as we all know, human life is very beautiful, but we have made it difficult. Do whatever you can that is right and just to make it less difficult. And may God bless you, loves you, as beloved son, as beloved daughter.